And in other news, this week the world will mark International Holocaust Remembrance Day on January 27th. And as such, the Israel Ministry of Diaspora Affairs has released a new report on Saturday night which shows how anti-Semitism around the world has skyrocketed this past year. So joining us now with more on the report is Michael Dixon, author and executive director of Stand With Us Israel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lida. So are you surprised at all by the data and the findings in this report? No, I think this important report will only be surprising to people who haven't been paying attention. Uh, we're told in the United States, one in four Jews was the victim of an anti-Semitic incident. Well, that's, you know, Jews are 2.4% of the population. That's a staggering number. In the UK, which is 275,000 Jews, 50% of them experienced anti-Semitism. As you mentioned, Paris is named in the report as an epicenter for uh, anti-Semitism. And in Sweden, one in four hate crimes uh, against a t are against a tiny Jewish minority who are just 0.1% of the population. So really, um, we're not surprised. We are, however, outraged that these numbers continue to rise. Uh, as you mentioned, the EU leaders and, and many people around the world are getting ready to memorialize Holocaust Memorial Day. And these EU leaders are very good at memorializing Jews that died in the Holocaust, but less good at protecting the living Jews of today. And we need to demand that of those uh, in the European Union and, of course, all around the world as these numbers continue to rise. I mean, the report highlights essentially three streams of anti-Semitism, if you will, right? Three different types. The classical Holocaust denial, which we know, as you mentioned, that EU leaders are, are very good at, at trying to combat, at least. And this new anti-Semitism, which is sort of a mix of anti-Israel sentiment. How do we combat such anti-Semitism today? Well, it's important that we define anti-Semitism. We need to define it in order to be able to defeat it. And we have a definition, the gold standard definition, the IHRA, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition. And that's helpful because anti-Semitism is something that mutates over time. You mentioned these different forms that anti-Semitism appears in that we see nowadays. And this leads to an underreporting and an a misunderstanding of anti-Semitism unless we have a solid definition as to what it is. Well, the IHRA has been adopted by over 450 organizations around the world. Uh, those include countries and political parties and municipalities, universities, businesses, sports organizations, the Global Imams Council, businesses and more. And if we want to understand why this is so important, we need only look at what's happened so recently at you know, the congregation in uh, Texas, where a synagogue was held hostage by somebody expressing jihadi motives and fierce anti-Jewish discrimination. And yet it was still misinterpreted, unfortunately, also by some FBI official, as well as by uh, some reporters as not being connected necessarily to the Jewish community when it was clearly an anti-Semitic attack. So as long as people, organizations, institutions adopt the IHRA, we'll be able to define anti-Semitism much clearer in order that we can fight it and defeat it. And now Diaspora Affairs Minister Nachman Shai is saying that Israel has a moral responsibility to help Diaspora Jews counter anti-Semitism as well. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, unfortunately, you know, Israel factors into the anti-Semitism that we see. Um, and that's why it's so important in the IHRA definition that we have within it uh, a version of what Natan Sharansky calls the three Ds, the way of de defining what anti-Semitism is when it comes to criticism of Israel, that crosses over the line. It's perfectly fine to criticize Israel. But when you start lapsing into demonization, uh, when you start lapsing into double standards, when you start lapsing into delegitimization that Israel is somehow within the whole family of nations around the world, 193 different nations, and the Jewish one is the only one that's not allowed to exist, then you are lapsing into anti-Semitism. So I think it's only right that Israel plays a leading role as you know the strongest Jewish community globally in helping Jews around the world because we are one family, uh, brothers and sisters that need to unite against anti-Semitism. And importantly, we need to also bring in our allies in the non-Jewish community all around the world to help fight this at what has been termed the longest hatred. All right, Michael Dixon, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.